Okay, so now we're going to start with selection method one. And you can see I've got an image of a girl loaded there with some very fine hair. Now what I need to do is just duplicate that. So I'll go up here and duplicate that image. Now we've got it there. We'll make sure that one's unselected because we don't need it. But the image we do have now, I'll rasterize that. Always a good idea to do that first. Now we're going to select the girl. And you can see her there. Now what we want to do here is use the Smart Selection Brush. I've got that set to 20 pixels at the moment. So we're just going to go around and select all the, the hair that the girl's got there. Find our way around the edges. This is the simplest method. And it's generally the quickest method. Now it's probably not a method that you use all the time when you've got somebody with hair like this or fur, because it can take you a little while to go around and select all these um, select all these edges with the with the brush. So what I can do is set that to maybe a fifty. Let's see if that gives us a bit more brush size, and we can brush through there. down there. Let's just go right around the edges. And I can see immediately, of course, that we've got some gaps there. We'll come back and finish those, fix those up in a moment. What we want to do is get the girl mostly selected. Up the top and around the corner. There we go. Now that's nice. There's no rush for this, of course. Don't rush it. Just take your time. Make sure you know what you're doing and you can see what you're doing clearly. Get all those areas. Now, you might want to improve that. Speed that up a little bit. Let's make it 75. Be careful with the brush size because you can forget, if you're not careful, that you've got a really large brush there and you can inadvertently do things you don't want to do. You can see I'm leaving little pieces there. You can just go back and you brush them out. There we go. Now you think, well, that's not very good. But you go back here and you select 20 pixels again. And you can see that came up on the bar. Just let me show you that. You'll see a little circle pop up in there. There's 25. OK, see the little circle just over near the girl's hmm, left ear. 25 is not too bad, but I prefer 20 for this job. Now, why do I def prefer 20? We're still adding strands of hair here. So let's go up the top and we'll push the crawling ants line right out to the edge where her hair goes around. Now, you can see a strand of hair there. I'll come back to that. Around there, down there. Now, we've got to go around that strand of hair there. There we go. Now there's a strand of hair. Push that line right out to the edge that's near her ear. And you think, well, that's no big deal. You're missing lots of strands of hair there, and I am. But we'll come back and finish that, fix that up any moment. Just getting the edges of, the main edges, if you like, out to where I want them. There we go. That edge there is uh, it's probably gone out a little bit too far. Now, we've got some gaps there. We've got to subtract some areas. Just put a dot there. Put a dot there. Take that down there a little bit. There's some hair in there. Just take that down. Little touches. You can, you can make that brush as small as you like. Now, let's, for example, go down to 10. 10 is very small pixel size, and we're going to go back to add, because what I want to do is just add that around there. You can see where I've added a little bit of hair there. Subtract. We've only got 10 pixels brush width, remember? Just, just touch in there, so you've got a little bit of the crawling ants in there. A bit over there again. 
Now, I think that's probably as good as we're going to get it with the brush. Oh, no, no, there's one there. Let's go right down here. There we go. We've got a little triangle down the bottom corner there. You can see where I'm brushing. And bring it up into there. And there. Now you can see there's a bumpy line on the bottom there, just about there. So I don't want to continue subtracting that. I want to add that back in there. There we go. Now that's not bad. Now it's non contiguous, it's not grabbing the end. Let's just refine that and see what we've got. Tap the refine button, which is that brush thing that was there. We'll just leave it at matte selection and overlay at the moment. Now you can see the brush is on feather or the width is 50 pixels. Now I want 50 pixels for this and you, you can see where the hair hasn't been properly done because the grey shows through. Now I want 50 pixels because you want a reasonable size um, brush to do this. Don't use a really small brush because it doesn't give it enough area to work with. 50 pixels is not too bad on an image like this. You might even have to go bigger. But you can see what happens when I brush in. Now there's a bit of grey hiding down there. That's brushed over. The grey is now gone. Remember, don't use a really small brush. You cannot draw in those lines. You have to let the magic of the application do that for you but you need to give it a big enough brush to work with so it can select the pixels around it and work with those. There's grey hiding in there, you see. Now, the girl may well have grey hair, but in this case, I don't think so. So, <laughs> I'm not going to tell her she's got grey hair showing in there, so I wouldn't advise you doing it either. There we go. Now, there's lots of little strands of hair in there, and this method will get most of them. You'll have to continue you'll have to continue brushing a little bit to sort of build up the layer. There we go. Now you can see the red is showing there. There we go. Down there. That's pretty good. There's another bit there. Let's brush it in. Now we want that bit of grey missing from there. Let's see if we can continue. That's got it. That's got just enough brushing in there. I think that's as good as we're going to get that. Oh, now I've gone and taken it all out again. Okay, let's fix up down here first. There we go. Now that one worked all right. Let's go back to this one. There we go, perfect. Sometimes if you do that and you go back, go somewhere else and then come back, for some strange reason, known only to the laws of the universe, it will work. Now, I can't see any grey around there that's obvious, which means all of the areas must be okay. Now, what I'm going to do is go to the selection because before we tick the box, we want to select it as a mask, so our layered, our image that's been selected there, the girl's face and hair, will become a mask, not a separate layer, although you can opt for a new layer, and it will create a new layer, a new layer with mask, or just a mask. All I want here is just a mask, easy to work with. Let's tick the box right next to it, and there it is. There's the background's gone, and if you look closely at the hair, you'll see it's not too bad. Now, we probably could have done a slightly better job there, but that's pretty good. If you were to put an image behind that, say the girl's on a beach or she's in showing in a mountain scene or indoors somewhere, rather than just the grey background that was there, you will find that it'll look really good. And the minute strands of hair on that head will look perfect. Okay, that's it for part number one. What we're going to do is look at other ways of doing this as well. So bear with me, or come back again later. Share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe.
Let's move on to part two. Two, selection method two, let's call it. Now again, I've got an image duplicated there from the original. There's our duplicate. The original's turned off. Now what I want to use is the freehand selection tool and the flood selection tool in this case. Now the flood selection tool has a tolerance bar on it. You can see there the tolerance, that's, that means it determines how close the colour you're selecting is to the colour around it. Now 15% is pretty broad. Let's take it down to 12.5. Mm, and we'll just, well, you just, we're just going to tap in the grey area, and there we go. Now, that's not looking too bad. You can see there, all the grey areas there are selected. All the grey areas inside the hair is what I'm talking about. And outside the edges, we don't want contiguous on because contiguous will only select areas of colour that are next to each other. But you've got areas inside loops of hair there and we want to select those too. But we've also got inside the face. Now we'll use the freehand selection tool there, that's that one, freehand selection tool. If you haven't woken up to it already, I'm using an iPad Mini 6 for this. Hence the fairly small screen. Now I've got a 10 pixel width there. And I want to subtract those areas. That's not add, but subtract. So let's go and draw a freehand selection around those areas that we want to subtract. Which are all around there at the moment. There's a dot anywhere you can see those little dots. And when you let go of the Apple Pencil, or your finger if that's what you're using, those little dots will disappear. They'll be subtracted. If you like, and depending on your image, of course, this is an image from Pixabay from the studio that's on the right hand side. Now you can see I've got rid of most of those little flashing dots that are really awkward. We've got down the bottom right hand corner there. We've got some dots down there. Now that one goes up against her arm there. That one's not too bad. Now what I want to do, because I don't want to select the back background and, and take the girl out, which is what will happen now if I were to click the Refine tool. What I want to do is tap the Selection menu, which is that square box within a square box, and invert the selection. You can see the dots have gone from the outside of the box to now just around the girl. Now they're not looking too bad, although there's a little bit of refinement needs to be done. So let's go back to the selection box and put refine selection on. Now you can see it's not looking too bad at all. Now on her wrist up here next to her eye, there's a patch, which will just, as per the refine tool, which we can paint out. We've got the paint tool set to about 50 pixels, which is not too bad. Now, my eyes cannot see anything wrong with that. Your eyes are younger and will probably be better. Can we refine the hair around there a little bit more? Let's go around there and see. There we go. We're taking out some of the grey that's still behind her hair in those really difficult to get at places. Down that side there, a couple of little bits of grey. Now that looks pretty good to me. 
if you can see any others, and I'll do that one just one more time. Sometimes if you go back over it, it puts it back in, which is a bit awkward, difficult to explain. There we go. Now I can't see anything wrong with that. We've got mask as an option set because I just want to mask it out and leave the face there. Remember we inverted it, so this should just leave the face. The selection, the, the apply, you've got the tick and the cross there. The tick is the apply. We've just applied it to that image. Now there's the face, the background's gone. I know this is a tricky method of getting rid of backgrounds, but we're talking affinity photo here, not some fly-by-night app off the internet. Now, you can do that with almost anything almost any image, and I'll show you in a minute with a different image how this can really work with um, things like uh, landscapes. Now that you've got an image there, you can export that and put a different background on it or anything you like. Very nice. Now, I hope you find that useful. There's two methods so far, method one, and this was method two. Method one used the flood, uh, the, the, the uh, what do you call it, that one there, Smart Selection Brush, this one used the Flood Selection Tool. I hope you're enjoying it, and if you are, please subscribe to the channel. Such fun, darlings. Okay, see you in the next video. Now let's have a look at Selection Method 3. This is a repeat of Selection Method 2, which is using the Flood Selection Tool and the Mark Tool. But in this case, you can see I've got the Flood Selection Tool set to 30 percent the tolerance. That's because there's blue sky and white sky there and we want to be able to get the lot of it if we can. What I'll do first though I think is duplicate the original image which is locked, close that one down and it's already been rasterized. You can see that there. Now let's see if 30 percent is good enough. We'll tap in here, get that selected flood selection tool, tap in there and it hasn't got the white selected. There we go, I've tapped the white and it's selected in there. Now let's go to find the freehand selection because I want to add, not subtract, I want to add areas. Let's add there. There we go, that's added that area in. That was the only area of pure blue sky that was taken out of it. There we go. Now that's not too bad. Now there's some areas on the grass there that we don't want selected. There's a few dots further down, so we'll subtract those using the freehand tool again. There, there, all those dots are gone. Now around the base of that tree, as you know I'm using an iPad Mini 6 here, very small working area, so if you want to enlarge the image a bit when you're working on it, feel free to do so. I'm just a bit crazy and I like to work in a small area like this. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, now you can see where that's going. All of the little dots are around there. We've got inside the tree selected, well, inside the area inside the tree branches. But this is no good again. What we don't want to do is select the background and just have that left. Oops, there's, I'm still on subtract. There's an area there that I want to take out. There's probably others and I can't see them at the moment. Let's go up here and invert the selection. Now, let's go back to add. That's left that there. Why is that staying there? I have no idea. That's got rid of it. Okay, we've inverted the image. Let's go and refine the selection. And there we go. Now that's not too bad. 
you can see there's a bit of horizon line there. So let's just use the selection brush to paint in there. And you can see the red mask, the matte overlay appearing there. So all of the sky through the branches and around the branches has been selected now. Inside the leaves, inside the branches. Look at that. That's pretty good. I don't know if you're going to get much better than that. Well, of course you could. I'm not saying you couldn't. Now, we don't want a selection. What we want is the mask. Now we go up to the apply. There's a ticking across there. Let's select the tick. Let's select the apply button and see what it looks like. There we go. Now that's not too bad, is it? There's a good reason for doing that. Now you can see there's right at the breast of the hill there, there's a bit of light showing through there. That's obviously a place I missed. Oh well. What are we going to do about that? You'll either do it again or you'll go back and see what happens. But that's it. That's how you select through the trees, the sky. You can get perfect skies behind that because as usual, you can put anything you like behind that. The white you can see there is because the image is on a white um, created document. No other reason. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed method three for doing landscapes, especially tree lines. Wonderful. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.